Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the differences between the electric eel wheel 5.1 and 5.2. Let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you are the sliding hooks. Now these are a lot smoother than the previous version. Much easier to slide. Uh, also because they're plastic instead of metal, where they're uh, touching the sidebar, that means that uh, these uh, will not damage the sidebar like these could over time. Also because the hook is actually a wire, it, it makes the opening a little bit bigger, which allows a bulkier yarn, and that's a nice addition. Some people are wondering what these holes are for. Those are just part of the uh, mold process that I use um, that lets me make the bar straighter um, so it doesn't actually impact functionality at all. Uh, another thing I want to point out is the uh, spindle. This thing right here is uh, all steel on the new version. On the previous version, it was aluminum. So this means that um, over time, when the yarn was rubbing against the aluminum, it could actually create some grooves on the previous version. Being steel, this new version is much more durable and will last a lot longer. Uh, I also wanted to point out that this version has bearings right here and there are also some on the front that are a little harder to see but there's a bearing there so the flyer is suspended by bearings on this version which is nice um, that helps reduce the noise and makes everything last a lot longer another nice improvement is this reducer so the previous version i didn't have a really good reducer system figured out it was kind of hard to pull it in and put it out and uh, this one i put o-rings on the reducer so it slots in really easy and it stays in nice and firmly and the point of this is that this reduces the size of the hole so when you're spinning fine yarn it wobbles less which is a, a really nice feature and the way this reducer works is is much nicer i'd also point out that on the spindle the steel spindle there's uh, holes on both sides now and that just makes it easier to see when you're loading the yarn in um, you're always probably going to use this one side um, for the yarn to come out of, but um, it just lets you see things a little bit easier when it's set up like that. So we'll put the reducer back in. Another nice feature that you might have noticed earlier on is this one has this hinged back, which is really pretty cool. Um, it makes changing the... Uh, bobbins really easy. So here I'll just show you how easy it is to change the bobbin. So you would just take the tension cord, pop it off. You can take off the bobbin, put a new bobbin on, and you line up the holes, put the tension cord, and you have a new bobbin. So it's really quick to change out the bobbins on this new version. And the reason I did this hinge design was primarily so I could get the bearings in, but um, it's also really nice, turns out, when you're changing the bobbins. So that's a really cool design. I've never seen that before on a spinning wheel. It, it may exist, but um, I thought it was a really good solution on a way to get the, the bearings into the system. Another thing that's sort of nice is that I'm playing with the software so that it gets a nice soft start. So you'll, you'll see, even if I crank it up really quick, it starts a little bit slower and that's good for the motor and it helps you prevent uh, breaking the yarn. I'm still adjusting the, the actual start speed. I'm probably going to make it start up a little bit faster than it currently does, but I'm, I'm really liking that feature and that's all software controllable. Uh, a few other things worth mentioning down here where you can't see is the uh, pulley on the motor on the previous one was a, a weak spot that would sometimes break off and you'd have to glue it on because it was wood. This new pulley, motor pulley, is a, a metal one with a set screw. So this is uh, definitely much stronger, uh, which is a, a nice uh, addition. Also, it's bigger, which is going to mean that it goes a little bit faster. I'll talk about the speed a little later. Also, the, des the way it's assembled is completely different. There's a bunch of these spacers sort of in the front and the back. And I'll, I'll just mention that it's a lot stronger case, which helps cut down on vibrations and noise. As for the speed, this old one goes up to about 1,000 RPMs. This new one maxes out at about 1,400 RPMs. So that's a pretty nice speed increase. And now I'm going to do a sound test. 
Okay, for the sound test, I'm using a standalone microphone and I'm not going to be modifying the sound at all in post-production. So this is to try to prevent auto gain in the microphone sound system from making them sound about the same volume because what has happened is this one's a little quieter uh, than this one and it has a lot less random noises to it, a lot less scraping noises and stuff. So it's much more pleasant to the ear and significantly quieter than the previous version. So this sound test is uh, a nice way of showing it. So first off, I'm gonna turn this one up to about a thousand RPMs and then I'll turn the old one up to a thousand RPMs and you can kind of compare those sounds. And then after that, I'm gonna go up to full speed on this one and uh, continue using this one at full speed. So this one will be going about 40% faster on the second test and you'll notice that it's you know still as quiet or even still a little bit quieter than the 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 older one even at the faster speed but you know first we'll do the uh, both a thousand rpms so that's the new one and here's the old one Okay, so now on the new one, I'll go all the way up to maximum speed. And now I'll go up to maximum speed, which is only a thousand RPMs on the old one. And now I'll just try them both at the same time. Thanks for watching.